working on the chicken coop? First things first, let's get a little bit of light out here. Looking like right here. That way it comes in the coop and it gives our room a little light. What do you think? That's bright. Let's see if we can turn it down to 20 watts, which is right there. That's 150 watts right there. Whew, that sucker's bright. There we go. We got a little bit of light in here and we're gonna be adding a lot more light. So this light is specifically for us. So you walk in the coop, you want some light in here. You got a light switch right there. Last week we finished hooking up the solar system, the batteries, the inverter and the panels. It's been charging off the sun. It's been running good. But today it's a different story. We're gonna be working on heating the chicken coop. Let's head outside. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna use. It's been getting cold out here and the chicken coop so far has been doing its job. We insulated it, we skirted it, and it has been holding the heat that the chickens themselves are putting off. I know that because we've been below zero the last few nights and their water that we keep outside is frozen like a brick and the water that we keep inside for them is just barely freezing on top. So I'm thinking it's getting down to about 20 degrees in the coop at night, which isn't too bad, but it is gonna get a lot colder here. So we're gonna be using some something to heat the coop that I love to use. We have a few of these running around the property that we use for different things. And this is a diesel heater. This is a Viver brand and we're gonna use this one. It's a five kilowatt. You need two things to run these. You need 12 volt power, which we have. We got all our batteries in there and you need diesel fuel and that's gonna go in the tank that we're gonna mount inside. We've got a few chickens that are molting and that means that they're losing their feathers and they're regrowing them. So they basically have like no clothes on. We're kind of worried about them. They're getting cold. It's crunch time. We're gonna see if we can get this heater installed today. Oh. That's cool. That's not even as high as it goes. You know what I mean? Let's see how many watts it's drawing. It should say in here. 55 watts is what it's set at right now. Let's crank it up and see what it see what it says. Okay, I'm gonna go low. What's it say? Zero. Okay, and now high. What does it say? A hundred and about 120. It keeps fluctuating. All right, so let's put it. It says higher than that. 150. What does that say now? 150. There's plenty of light in here. Huh? That light's done. Let's heat this place up. The heater's gonna go in the same equipment room as what we call it in the chicken coop. It's almost like a closet. So we got all the solar stuff and I'm kind of designing this as we go. I think I'm gonna be putting the diesel heater somewhere around here. We need to mount a fuel tank and then we're gonna have the diesel heater come into the wall somewhere. We're gonna try to aim it kind of low. Heat rises, so if you heat it kind of low, hopefully it'll uh, circulate the heat in the chicken coop a little bit more. You can hook up these diesel heaters a lot of different ways. I'm gonna do it the same way I did it in my truck. I'm gonna use like some L brackets to kind of hold it in place. So I'm gonna get these in here and leveled off and we'll mount her on. All right, let's see where this goes. Something like that. This is a fuel tank we're gonna be using, 15 liters. I think that's a little over three gallons. These last quite a while. We're trying to get the little uh, nipple in there. You feed a wire through, you hook it on the other end and you can pull it through and uh, put a nut on there. Check that. Something like that. Maybe right there. I want to leave room to fill it up, so that looks pretty good right there. Oh my gosh, I got my finger in there. Here's what we got so far. We got the fuel tank mounted up top. The fuel line's gonna come down. It's gonna go through a little fuel filter and then it's gonna, <laughs> and then it's gonna go through the fuel pump and that's gonna pump the fuel into the diesel heater. This is the combustion air intake. 
That's a little long. We're probably gonna shorten that. A few different ways we can go now, but I think we're gonna work on getting the electrical hooked up and seeing if we can get some power to this bad boy with all these wires. I'm gonna put it in there for now. Then you can really tack it up against the wall. Wow. Okay, they're going in the same hole though. Let's clean her that way. Yeah. See if we can get any power. Oh yeah, she's on. The controller, that's power for the diesel heater. Okay. We got juice. We're getting there, so how we have this hooked up is I have this really cool switch panel that we used to use for our 12 volt lights, and that is wired with these into the battery, so it gives power to all these switches. And we hooked the diesel heater up to this second switch here, so if I turn it on, we've got the controller over here for the diesel heater. We're not gonna turn it on yet, because we're not ready. We've got it wired, that part's all ready to go. The next step is gonna be kind of interesting. So this puts off exhaust when it burns the diesel fuel, so we need to vent the exhaust safely outside, and we're gonna try to do that next. So we have nothing right here. perfectly straight. Good job. All right, now the fun stuff. We're going to try to build, uh, I believe it's called a thimble, I believe, where you would put like a wood stove pipe through a wall. It's kind of like, uh, it's hard to explain, but let's say this is going to go through the wall. This is what we're going to use. We're going to make this a three inch because it's four inch right now. Here's the diesel heater exhaust. We're basically going to float it kind of in between this pipe and in between the wall to keep things from getting too hot in there. So like I said, these are four inch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice them and then uh, kind of roll them in there. And we've got two of them and we'll stick it in the wall and we'll see how it looks. Get it down a little smaller. Nice. And I want it hanging out a little. The pieces I was gonna use, they didn't work. They said they were four inch pieces and turned out they were only three and a half, so they weren't long enough. We had an old piece of stove pipe that I was able to cut down, roll around itself and stick it in here. It looks kind of ugly right now. We're gonna be cutting this off, but we're gonna have the exhaust pipe going through here. I've already have it bent from the inside. So this is how it's gonna go. It's gonna run through that inside section and we're gonna be wrapping it with exhaust wrap. This is uh, the stuff you would wrap like motorcycle exhaust or headers on a, on a vehicle with. It's like a fiberglass wrap and I have this on both of our diesel heaters and it brings the temperature down a lot of this exhaust without putting this on here. This exhaust gets like crazy hot and with this on there, you can actually touch it. So let's wrap it up and we'll see if we can feed it through. Tilt it the 
Here we go, we got it all hooked up. We have our diesel in the tank, and over on this side, we have run some ducting. So this is where the hot air is gonna blow out. We got it coming down there towards the ground and on a little adjustable vent so we can point it. And we're gonna fire this thing up. So our diesel here's on. We just put gas in it for the first time. So these fuel lines, they just have air in them. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prime the pump. So we're basically gonna suck fuel out of the tank into the pump and get a little closer to the diesel heater. To do that, you click these two buttons right here and hold them. Okay, now we're gonna turn it on and it has to kind of go through a cycle when you turn it on. It also does a cycle when you turn it off. But right now it's going to warm up the glow plug. It's gonna get hot enough in there. Then it'll start igniting the diesel fuel and then the fan will really like take off and you can really tell it's pushing out some heat. So hold the, hold the power button on. The heater has different modes. It actually does have a thermostat mode where it'll kick on and off when it gets to a certain temperature. I haven't used that too much. I don't think I'm gonna use it out here. So what I do is I put it on medium heat, which is level three. One is low and six is high. So you know what? Let's put it on four. It's cold out here. It's gonna kick the fuel. As soon as the fuel gets, the fuel's not actually to the diesel here yet. It's got about an inch to go. So once it gets there, it should, it should go like that's a good sound. So this thing starts to sound like a mini jet engine. That's how you know it's working. We're gonna monitor things in here for a few minutes. Oh yeah, it's really taking off now. The exhaust, it's looking good. I use these metal brackets here to kind of get it to sit right in the middle of that metal sleeve we put on the outside. These heaters, once you get them going, it's just a matter of minutes, maybe like two minutes. They start putting out some major heat. So let's give this a couple minutes and we'll head into the chicken coop and see what it's looking like. So here's where it sucks air in, blows it across this, it warms it up, comes out here. You already feel this is getting warm. Look how much that blows. So this thing really puts out uh, some major force and that's one of the cool things about a diesel heater is it puts off really dry heat and it's not just a heat that sits there, it's a heat that blows and circulates around. We use them in the back of our truck. We have one we use for ice fishing. There's just a huge difference between a dry heat and a wet heat. And when you have chickens in a coop, there's a lot of moisture. You don't wanna add any more moisture to the coop. So this heater, it's already, oh yeah, it's already getting hot. I'm excited to see what this thing does in here. Here's the exhaust on the outside. You can really hear it and this, I mean, the exhaust is hot. Where you have the exhaust wrap, I mean, it's not even getting hot enough to burn me, but it is smoking off. I don't know what exactly it's smoking off, but every time I've wrapped the exhaust, it like smokes off the fumes for a little while. But this metal part without any wrap on there, look how hot this is. So very hot, and we're gonna do a little bit of a test today. It's 315, and the temperature in the coop was 28 degrees. Uh, I don't know, let's give it a couple hours. We'll see what happens. The temperatures outside are gonna be dropping. I got the heater on level four. We'll see what it does. crazy how warm that is. It's a uh, very, very toasty. Not extremely the same as a wood stove, but, but pretty comparable actually. And I have it, or we have it angled at an angle. So hopefully it kind of rises up where the chickens roost at night. And we also have it angled towards our water. We have water inside and outside for them since some of them like to spend their days inside. And I'm not sure how warm it's going to be when we come back, but I'm betting that it is going to be, <laughs> I'm betting that it's going to be pretty warm. Noticeable difference.
It's been three hours since our diesel heater has been on and you can tell it is a night and day difference in here. So when I walked in, it's like a chicken party. We've been kind of checking on the chickens in the last few hours, but uh, what we have found, so we started at 28 and we're now at 55. It's about to go to 55 degrees. It's been about 10 degrees per hour right now and it's starting to slow down a little bit more. The humidity has increased to 50, I believe it was 41. And we think that's because there was some like frozen mist happening on the door and the windows. And so now that's moisture in the air. I'm not personally that concerned about that level of moisture. With the chicken coop, there was just a few times where it smelled a little bit strong in here. So Eric and I opened the door. That was probably, probably a week ago or so, but recently it hasn't been a problem. So we'll monitor that. And I didn't tell you what temperature it is outside. Eric's reporting that he checked it before we came over here and it's 15 degrees and it is going to drop probably a lot closer to zero degrees tonight. So we're gonna be actually turning the diesel heater down to level two and I think the birds will be fine. We are really just aiming to keep it above freezing so they don't need to be at 50 or 60 degrees tonight. So you can tell how happy the birds are. We have not seen them this happy in like six weeks, um, especially this big fella right here. This is our first generation Icelandic, so he's our best rooster. And he has just not been doing that well with this winter. It'll be his fifth winter. Pretty much everyone else is doing good and especially the very young chickens that we have. We have found young birds, one to two years of age, do pretty awesome in Alaskan winters. I'm really excited Eric got this hooked up because the birds are just so much happier. He's staring at me right now. Okay guys, windows aren't frozen anymore and we actually got a few eggs today. I think we got, did I take them out? We got three, which is a little bit more than I was expecting. The last, uh, the last few weeks, our egg production has gone down pretty steadily with the low light hours. At this time of the month, we are just under nine hours of daylight. Whereas a month ago, we actually had 12 hours. And a month from now, we will be closer to six hours or even under six hours. So it's pretty drastic if you think about it like that. And it's also drastic for the birds. We plan to get some lights in here that's going to be addressed tomorrow. We're gonna let everyone go to sleep because they're getting really frazzled with us in here. Let's go down to level two. Warmer than the room. Yeah, it's definitely a lot warmer. Look, there's no ice on this window now. It melted it. Okay, that's good. That's good for the night. We got it on low. Well, what a beautiful morning we got for working on the chicken coop and Ariel decided to make us some homemade apple cider. So we got that to look forward to later, but we're gonna give you kind of an update on the chicken coop. It's been actually two days since we put the diesel heater out there. And the first night I left it on level two, it got down to negative six Fahrenheit that night. I went out there in the morning and it was 55 degrees in the chicken coop. So honestly a little too warm. So yesterday morning we kicked it down to level one and it was working good. It was still pretty warm in there. So I shut it off through the majority of the day. And then I think last night at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock when it got dark, I turned it on on level one. Let's go in there and we'll see what it's looking like. It was even colder this morning when I woke up, it was seven below. Look at the frost. Yeah, it's, it's all the moisture coming out there from the inside. Okay. Ooh. It is on level one, and we are sitting at 51 degrees Fahrenheit, which, I mean, 
That's pretty impressive. For negative seven outside to be 51 degrees on the inside, I will take that. And the sun's out today, it's a clear day. It's probably warming up to like 10 degrees during the day. So I'll probably shut this off. This coupe is doing a great job. It's like holding the heat all day. So let's head into the utility room here. And we are having some issues, but it's not with the diesel heater. Okay, so let's turn this bad boy off. Yesterday, we were turning our light in here and our inverter threw a code. It threw a code that said error number 12. I went in the manual to look at that. They list all the codes one through 10, but it says if you have 11 through 19, you need to call the company because you got a problem. So I called them and they basically said that it has internal damage or something wrong with it internally. And it's busted and it's not gonna work anymore. And it's five years old, it's out of warranty. So we're pretty much just out of luck with it. Um, I've tried to do a couple hard resets where you disconnect the battery from it overnight. It didn't seem to work. It is working right now, which is kind of strange and it's been working all morning. As you can tell, I got the light on in here. So unfortunately, this is like how we charge the batteries from the generator when we're not getting any solar. Luckily right now we're getting solar so we don't need it. Uh, it's not like an emergency. The good thing is we don't need this inverter to run all the lights in the coupe. We bought all 12 volt lighting, so they run directly off our battery and this switch. So let's get started on our lights. Yeah, is that light still working? I don't know why it's working now. Alright, let us in. The plan is to light the outside of the chicken coop, which we call the run, and also we're gonna do the inside. These are the lights we're gonna be using. These are LED, I guess you would call them like a strip light, and they're 12 volts, so they've got a positive and a negative. You can hook these directly to like an automotive battery. They've got an on and off switch on them, but we're gonna hook them up a little bit differently, and we're gonna do four of these outside here, and we're gonna do four of them inside the coop, and then we're gonna, Another little cool light we're gonna put on the outside of the run so you can kind of like see the door when you're walking in and we're gonna put one on the outside of the coupe and that's like an outdoor, uh, almost like a floodlight. I don't know, pretty cool. So this is 10 watts, those are eight watts all together with lights and the diesel heater. We should be under 100 watts of power when everything's up and running. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, get everything kind of just mounted where we want it. Maybe start wiring it in and we'll have to figure out how to get the power inside. Why are we doing things since the sun's coming in? I, think we should put, I really think you should put two over there. One right here. Yep. Two, three. And then just one out there. Okay, so if I put a zip tie, dang it, on the end of them. That's pretty legit right there. And then put one right here. Yeah, and zip tie it up. Zip ties, right? I mean, they're gonna do nothing. So you're gonna wire all this and then run it back along the pole? We're gonna wire it and kind of twist and zip tie it around the pole. There's gonna be a lot of zip ties in this project. These lights do come with a sort of adhesive. It's like a double-sided tape is what it looks like, but it's way too cold out here and there's too much frost on this, so we're using zip ties. We gotta grab another one. So what do you think? Put one there. Something like that. It's okay guys, no one's chasing you out. If I had a long enough screw, it could go right there. Look at that. And then we can run the wiring right in there. Okay, here we go. Okay, let me get this first one hooked in and then we'll have to, we're gonna, every Are time we- Are we gonna we, twist it? No. Oh. It's too hard to do that. Every time we hit a new light, we're gonna have to splice it in again. So it's gonna take a couple seconds here. Man, look at all this room these chickens have. Eggs, my little friends. I don't think we're actually doing it for eggs. We're actually doing it for- Sanity. <laughs> here, and then we'll cut it. Oh, that's what you meant. There you go. Okay, so let's get me what I got here. Do you want to untwist it or no? No, baby. I can't after I. It's 
So you did a second hard reset on the inverter and it may be working? So far it was working, but... Do you need another one of those? Let's see if I can get this one to work. It's so cold that ice crystals form in the air on the moisture. Like there's not even anything to cling to. Except for the moisture in the air. I know. And then it clings to itself and it creates frost. At this temperature? I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I think Everything that's what's going freezes. on. Nah, just pull it in anywhere. Use these staples to staple the wire. Okay. Like along the wall. Oh, I should probably move this wire. So, like, something. Let's be out of her. Just give it a go and see. Please. Working. Basically in line with the windows. One there, one there, one here, one there. Like in line, like ver like this. Like one yeah. here. I think that's great. One there. Okay, let's see. Parallel what kind of thought. So it works. Yeah, that's, that looks awesome. Nice. Look at that. Pretty slick. There we go. There we go. Do you know how to strip those? Just the tips, yeah, I do. Yeah, so take it and you gotta split it with your finger how first. How much do you need, like a quarter? So take a split them apart, only like two, two or three inches, I got it. Okay, to be honest, this part I may need assistance with. I feel you're self relying on yourself. <laughs> What'd you say? I failed. The mission right there. I'll strip. I'll give this to you next time. I can strip. There's a learning curve to all of them. You're gonna go up higher. It's a second from the smallest one. I know it's this one, right? No, no, no. The smallest one's at the top. All the way to the top and go down to the second one right, right there. So you don't press all the way? Is that like the trick? Or you can press all the way? Yeah, you press all the way. You want to cut through the rubber but not the wire. Yeah, but I was on the right hole is what happened. Be over the top or anything, but you don't really take this kook over the edge. Can you read? Music! Oh. Yeah, some music for them. Maybe some jazz. Okay. Well, we got them in, and the ones inside we were able to use the little brackets that have a little screw. So they just clip on. This system we're doing, it's gonna be highly customizable. So if we wanna have some of these off, like it's too much light, we can turn them off. If it's not enough light, we can always add lights to the system. All the wiring is exposed, as you can tell. So what we're gonna do now, we all have these all wired in together, is we're gonna shoot into the utility room and I think we're gonna get power to it and then we're gonna have to run power from that to one more outside light. And then we're not just hooking this to a switch, we're gonna be hooking this to a 12 volt timer, which should be pretty cool. You want me to pull all the way to the inverter? We got just you're gonna pull all this in. Splice it and run it down. So we could run along the wall. Yeah. Continue it, splice down to the timer. Yeah, you can splice it along. And the timer needs to go into this. That's a good idea. Okay, let's do it. Something. So as a side note, we always have a carbon monoxide detector when we run those diesel heaters. So we got one up in here, and I thought I'd show you guys the timer we're gonna use. So, you know, you can have a timer in your house to like turn your lights on and turn your lights off and you can program them. Those are for AC power. So I found this one, it's a digital timer switch and it's for 12 volt lighting. Okay, I dropped all the wires. So that's it and uh, what the heck? It must have batteries in it or something because it's on right now. That's pretty cool. So we're gonna get this thing wired up and we're gonna see if we can program it. Didn't I hand you like some really small screws or something there? No. I like, need like some mini screws. Sometimes if you dig deep enough in your pockets. Do you find gold? No, just garbage. You guys need your calcium, huh? There you go. We need to hook this, positive and negative, into one of these switches, and then when we turn the switch on, probably use that one, 
we'll have a uh, we'll have power. So here, let's put this right here. All right, I need your holes right here, but you can't let it fall down, or else you're gonna the wires are gonna pull up. All right, I'll be back in my twenty minutes. Thank you. You did such a nice job. It looks hey, so this is the Gator Nation here, huh? <laughs> Lights might turn on. Tell me if they're on. Oh, oh, I don't know oh if they're God. on because the switch. I don't know if this timer's on or not. Are they're they on? not on. Okay, let's have it come on at 6:30. Let's try that. 6:30 a.m. and then once that's good. Okay, it's on. Eric. Are they on? One of them is on. We've got juice, so we got the little timer hooked up. It's actually pretty straightforward and easy, and it does have a little built-in lithium battery in it. So I'm guessing. It'll hold like memory of uh, how you have it set. So our little light's on. We have it to come on at 6.30 in the morning and to shut off at 7.30 at night. One of our lights is on. Let's go check it out. So that one's on. I think the problem is they got little switches on them. Yep, there we go. It's gotta turn all the switches on. It's got light. The lights look awesome, but we're not gonna be able to tell how uh, bright they are until tonight. So we're gonna be back out here and checking them out. We are, yeah, it's like blazing out right now, but pretty happy with how this turned out. We got a lot of cleaning up to do. It's like a war zone out here and uh, we gotta tidy up some wires in the run. And you wanna turn, maybe we'll turn the heater back on for the chickens because we had the door open quite a bit. Yeah, let's turn the heater back on and we'll see you guys out here when the sun goes down. Yep. <laughs> sun down. 330 watts. The sun is out, look at it. It's gonna go all the way. Okay, we made our way back to the chicken coop and it looks amazing out here. The LED lights never really seem that bright during the day, but they light up at night. And so at 7 p.m., we are pretty much almost at complete darkness and we're gonna head in and see how bright it is. I mean, you can kind of tell how bright it is already. It's kind of got like a blue feel to it. Cause I can turn mine off. They look awesome. There's uh, four in here and they they look great. This is probably the perfect amount of light for the chickens in here. It's it's pretty bright and I think it has like more of a blue tint to it maybe because they're LED. And the run looks pretty bright as well. Maybe it's not lit up as much as this. I don't know if like the paint is contributing to some of the brightness in here, but this will really wake them up in the morning when it goes off. We got cleaned up and we were also able to add a little ramp for them. Some of the girls were having a hard time getting up or some of the chickens were having a hard time getting up to the roost. So they've got a nice little new ramp and hopefully they can stop trying to go to bed in these nesting boxes. Come on guys. Unfortunately, these young birds just kind of have a hard time <laughs> figuring out their way into the flock. Two, because one broke. Two eggs today. Well, there was three, but one of them broke, so we got two eggs. One yesterday and three before the day before. We're gonna head outside. 41, almost 42 degrees. We got that light right there. Light it up for you. And this is what it looks like in here. It's amazing. So much brighter than before because it's actually like nighttime and I can actually see in here. So the birds will have this area too. And I think it's pretty much gonna be lit up all winter in here. Eric did a great job. We may add two more lights. I was talking to him about it, but it's pretty bright in here. I'm a little surprised. It's a little brighter than I thought it would be. So we'll see. And I think we're gonna turn in for the night. We're gonna head in and drink some cider and see if the timer goes off. It's supposed to go off in a half an hour.
believe it or not, we are wrapping up on the chicken coop or chicken house and run project for the season. It seems like we've been working on it all year. <laughs> and we have, we've been working on this chicken coop, the whole thing, like since we first got here. So we first got here in the spring and we needed somewhere for the chickens. And that's when we started working on the chicken coop, insulating it and everything. And then we've brought it over here and we're pretty much wrapped up with it. I know in the future, Arrow wants to either paint it or put siding, maybe something like that. But that's it for this season. Exciting for sure. Yeah, I'm a stickler on that, but it's not that important. We don't need to do that yet. And the coop may seem pretty extreme, and that is probably because it is and we are in an extreme climate so we are preparing for that and we've mentioned it before um so this will be the fifth winter for the chickens some of them when we first got birds four years ago um i was really adamant specifically about open air coops and letting in you know having like good ventilation not insulating it not sealing it off not heating it and not providing additional light and this is like the exact opposite and so living here through those winters and witnessing our chickens through them has really just changed my perspective and it has absolutely softened me so we were going more for a coop where the chickens are not just staying alive barely, but actually thriving, right? Definitely. So the old coop, I feel like that's how it was. When it hit winter and it got really cold, they were just in there surviving. It was brutal. We lost chickens. It was pretty bad. One good thing about that old coop though, I'll say right now is the open air. So you had extremely ventilation. good ventilation. We never walked into that coop and it was hit with like that ammonia, ammonia smell or like moisture from the chickens because you had so much ventilation. With this one already, we do know and we do notice that it is not ventilated as well. The humidity is higher. Yeah, the humidity is higher because it's sealed in and it's insulated, but we do have ventilation options in there. So their little tiny chicken coop door that they go in and out, that's pretty much always gonna stay open. And then we have three windows in there that we can crack open if it becomes a problem. The reason you don't want moisture is because of uh, frostbite, increases frostbite chance and also like just respiratory, but that's also at the compromise that the chickens, what am I trying to say, colder? they're colder, right? right? Because you have more of a draft. So yeah. yeah, so we actually did end up with a lot of chickens with frostbite and it wasn't uncommon that we had to kill some, call some hens um, in the winter if we knew that they weren't gonna make it. So right. we just kind of decided that that's not really like how we wanna keep chickens anymore, right? Right, and this whole coop is basically just because we like chickens and this whole thing is almost like an experiment to see if it's gonna work. You know, we don't have a lot of electricity to power our thing. So we kind of thought of this idea and I mean, I'm, impressed with it so far. Yeah, I'm more than impressed with it. I think it's amazing. I, I was uh, just chatterbugging about it the last 24 hours, but the lights, so the lights are also kind of in addition to help the, the birds be healthier. Um, it's kind of hard to imagine, but when it gets so dark, the birds respond to the light. So they only get like back where we used to live, it was under five hours of light they'd get in the winter. And here, I'm guessing it'd be closer to three. And that is such a small amount of time if it's, mm -hmm. let's say, negative 20 in the coop, and they only get up for three hours. So then they're literally on their roost just shivering. And it's not even like good sunlight. Like you yeah. say three hours Weak. or five hours of sunlight, it's like barely Weak. creeping in. It's just like lightening it up. And we found that the birds don't have enough time to eat, to get up, yep. do their thing, stretch, just live and be a bird. So that is our sole reason for providing light. It is absolutely not for egg production. You do not need to heat chickens in this cold of a climate or provide light. We just simply want to and have decided to at this point. Yep. And then the, the bright side of the lights is that they do increase egg production. So we've actually had pretty slow, but I think that that's gonna ramp up a little bit, right? We've been really slow. We have a ton <laughs> of chickens. We've been getting like one or two eggs a day. So I, I'm guessing in like, what do you think, two to three weeks? Yeah. They're gonna be like in full production again. And we've got some pullets in there, so eventually those will start laying too. 6.30 this morning, the lights came right on. It was awesome. I woke up, actually I like slept in. I got up at like 7.30 and I looked out the window and I saw the chicken coop all lit up. It was pretty awesome. So I went out here at like 10 or 11 this morning and I shut off the lights actually. And it's about midday right now. It's so bright still that they don't need those lights on. And then when it starts to get dark, I'll hit the switch, the timer will engage, they'll come on. And then at that 7.30 mark, they'll shut off. And the diesel heater last night, I just ran it like late at night till early in the morning or like seven or eight this morning. And I shut the diesel heater off. It's been off for a few hours and it's still about 45 degrees inside the coop. There may be some like tweaking and testing we're doing this summer, uh, winter, but so far it's been like really efficient. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. With, I'm impressed with everything. In the past, maybe you've caught it. We used to light the coop just 
Well, we did, we used to do flashlights. Mm -hmm. That was what we used to do the first few winters. And that's really weak lighting. Yeah. Um, Just hanging one flashlight in the yeah. coop to kind of wake them up a little. It's not very effective, no. honestly. And then you had like a little battery you set up, I think last winter. And yep. what we really ended up doing last winter is when we would run our generator for our house, Eric kind of plugged it in. So we ran it as well for the chickens. So they yep. had a really nice winter and we noticed they were much, much happier, kind of like now. Mm -hmm. Our goal is not to create, I don't want to use the word weaker birds, but our goal is not to make it like a paradise for them in their year round. I do still want them very acclimated to right. winters here. They really are already. Mm -hmm. They can tolerate pretty cold temperatures and they have, I don't know if just to say have more feathers or what, but they just are able to survive here because of what they've been through. So we're just aiming for birds that are a little happier in winter. Yeah, we don't want them to just stay stuck in that coop and not want to go outside because it's like 50 degrees in the coop and it's negative 40 outside. That's why we kind of want to let the temperature drop inside the coop. So far, they've still been coming outside just as much as they always have. So yeah. that's a good start. Uh, pretty much all of them. I'd yeah. say over 80% of them mm -hmm. come outside, which is awesome. We have decided that we are going to add two more of those little lights in the outside coop. So that'll add 16 watts to our power. We just wanted a little bit brighter out there. And for the past two days, the inverter has been working. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and that's it. We're done for now. So we hope you enjoyed watching our, our strange little chicken coop come together. Yep. And, and we'll, our strange chickens. We'll see how it does. This winter should be pretty interesting. High five. Project done. Yes. Nice looking bird. Who's out there today? They're all out there. Little babies and everything.